Hey, what's going on, you guys? Welcome back to Snake River Fly. Uh, I've had a pretty popular fly for the last half dozen years or so here at the shop called the Burnt Toast Balanced Leech. And it's a great one. It's a mohair or a, a leech lace product, if you will. And then, of course, Zero G is one of our um, keystone products that we use. So we've been fishing a different version of that <coughs> uh, balanced um, leech lace zero G leech lately and uh, we got a new color coming out actually we got several colors coming out um, so today we got a copper bead on one of our awesome uh, Matsu jig hooks this one's an eight of course we're rocking Semper Fly uh, six out waxed and we'll just go ahead and work our way through this balanced leech for you I've already Build a thread base to put a you know one of our our balanced pins uh, through one of our MFC copper um, tungsten beads, and so now I'm at this point where I'm going to attach tail, and so we're going to use gray and copper uh, zero gravity, which is our new color. We also have two new dudes that you'll be seeing tutorials with soon that have been really popular the last year and a half or so. Halloween, which is a black with a really cool kind of floral copper. And then we had a ton of requests for, you know, a bloody minnow. So this is our bloody minnow white and, and red combo. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna migrate my thread back to the back of this hook where I'm gonna attach my tail. My tail's just gonna be a clump of that zero G, which is just super nice broke down pre-sorted flash and, and marabou and i'm just going to take it's all basically three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half long our, our fiber length so i'll just kind of align them a little bit and i'm just going to clump dub these guys right on the back just simple just like so and right above where the barb would be this is a barbless hook just pinch on the top like so what we call a clump dub. Get some wraps to make sure that that bottom is you know, not going anywhere and then you're just gonna comb back the other part and that gives us a really rad leech tail, minnow tails, whatever. And you can pinch it. There's beauty about that stuff. You don't really need to cut it or anything. So now uh, just gonna migrate forward with out of the same line as the Burnt Toast and the River Rust is the Gray and Copper Leech Lace. And here's our color that matches up really nice with the Zero G. Um, and I'm just gonna take maybe five, six inches of this um, Leech Lace. And what I like to do is I'll just slide in, instead of tying this in long and doing a couple wraps forward, I'll just take and divide that in half and bring it underneath right in that notch where our pin ended and, and, and the diameter gets of the shank is smaller. This works really nice to fill in that void. Then I'll just use my Semper waxed to anchor that down and it does a pretty good job of evening out the shank. Throw a couple wraps in there. Using the uh, floral orange, floral red, floral red from Semper and just trying to kind of make sure that I keep that overall shank size about the same diameter. Uh, then I'll just advance my thread forward. I've already done a whip finish in here or two or three or I think 26 actually to anchor that but but two or three whip finishes is good to pull right there and I'll just bring my thread forward to my bead and now I'm going to twist the two strands of the leech lays, you know, maybe half a dozen, 10 times. Then I'll take just a standard wire brush. Um, one of ours, I think they're 399. We probably should just throw them in when you buy this stuff, but, um, and comb out that leech lace. So now I'll just move forward. If you're a rotary guy right now, you can get your roto on. If you're an old school dude like me, you're just gonna wrap it. I'm just gonna comb the fibers from the mohair back and palmer my way forward like you would on the burnt toast leech or you know the good old-fashioned Canadian mohair. Um, 
It's just kind of tricky to find anymore, but there's some better substitutes out there. I think stuff we carry is pretty great. <clears throat> Get almost to the front here. And I'll just kind of manage my wraps. Um, I'll show you kind of how to do that. Get a little more fuzz on the front of this thing. It's because the front of our leech needs some love too. Give it a couple more twists. And when we get around this spot around that 60 degree jig, we can just, you can just manage it, you know? Maybe one fly might take two, three wraps. The next fly might take six or seven. You know, but just don't follow the recipe. What do we have a customer tell us this week, Brandon? It was, uh, fly time is more like cooking than bacon, right? So you might end up putting a few more or a few less in. Whatever, get it to look how you want. So standard fare, tie that stuff off. Um, I either always do it on top or on my side. Um, tie it off. And just gonna do a little clean in here. Build a little hot spot. Do a whippy doo da. One, two, three, 49, 50. 51 wraps. Pull that sucker tight. Love our Semper Fly thread. Stuff's a bomb. Our rising scissors work really good. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so then what we'll do is we'll fuzz this thing out by combing forward. All right, get all that stuff unteased. You can see the subtle copper, subtle silver, the gray, all that kind of stuff. Certain days, this leech really outperforms almost everything else. Pinch or two. Then we'll just head cement this bad boy. And there is the copper and gray balanced from SRF in a size eight. Look for it on the website. The copper and gray should be up there, hopefully, uh, between now and Thanksgiving, as well as the uh, bloody minnow and the Halloween. Anyway, thanks for watching the gray and copper balanced leech SRF.